Well, you may not know his name, but you definitely know his designs. Mark Zanino has dressed everyone from Mariah Carey to Joan Collins, so it's safe to say he knows a thing or two about looking good, but at a cool... <laughs> Sorry, $90,000. His couture creations do not come cheap. Oh, let us in, Kyle. What's so funny? <laughs> no, it's, this is great. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but what's what's Our what, very what's own entertainment Mariah? reporter, Catherine Eisman, joins us live from L.A. Oh, Catherine, we are so excited about this segment. Um, you got an insider look at his Hollywood studio, right? I really did. You know, in the fickle world of fashion, it's very rare for a designer not only to stay in business 30, 40 years after they start, but to be as relevant to the A-list celebrities of today as they were when they first began. And he's such a gentleman, so it was an absolute treat to spend some time with him. When a celebrity needs to dress to impress, there's one designer they call, Mark Zanuno. was lucky enough to get up close and personal with the master of material. Britney Spears at the Billboard Music Award. Talk about a defining career moment. It was pretty fabulous. I, I thought it was going to be a huge moment because people hadn't seen her for a while. She knew she wanted red and she knew she wanted some kind of coat opening up and, um, and her body is phenomenal. have <laughs> like four days it was such a rushed rushed project nestled in the heart of Beverly Hills behind paparazzi proof windows stands Mark's sprawling atelier a luxurious studio where he gets to play dress up with red carpet royalty I heard that you kept Queen Bee waiting for you outside the front door here. Um, unfortunately I did she, I had, I had just come from New York and I did an, you know, a fashion interview and they asked, you know, who haven't you dressed that you'd like to? And I said, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Came back, you know, to LA uh, the next day and I called the shop and I, my office and I said, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm not going to come in right away. And they said, no, come in. Beyonce's here waiting. And I was like, shut up. Now everybody's going to tease me, you know, for the next two months. And I went to the gym. So I'm driving, go to Starbucks. I take my time coming in. And as I pull into the parking lot, Beyonce's like, hi, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I just said, you know, I thought everybody was lying to me. Hopefully it was worth the wait because um, this is one of the outfits that I was making for her. Nobody's even seen this yet. Nobody, not even she has seen this or even tried this on yet. So um, you get the first look at it. His couture constructions are also a favorite of Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, the first thing I did was a gold and sort of orange teal fringe. And that was for the opening number. Somebody else, another designer did her costume for that and she hated it. So I did this and it got a lot of attention. And that was the one thing she said, I'm not a fringe girl, I don't like a lot of fringe. And I did it, and then they ended up actually changing the choreography to that number. They ended up changing the costumes to all the backup dancers, so everybody had fringe, and it really turned into a really fun number. He recently dressed Mariah Carey for her new Las Vegas residency. I made eight costumes, and um, we had about four days. It was crazy. I mean, it, literally, we worked, you know, 24-hour shifts. Tell me about what goes into creating that gravity-defying number that you put her in for the GLAAD Media Awards. Well, it was the first time I worked with her, so I wasn't sure, you know, just what it was she was looking for. Um, but when she put that on, I mean, it did it. And she had also said to me, and I'm not giving back the dress, like, I want this dress from my archives. Uh, did you have a long time to create those costumes? No. You know, it, what's strange, I never have a lot of time. They wait until the last moment, or like I've sent sketches for Mariah, and I haven't heard back. If you're watching this, Mariah, <laughs> please respond to those latest <laughs> sketches. Please. But these breathtaking costumes weren't always the plan. Do you often do costumes for performances, or what's, tell me a little bit about that. No, I I rarely ever do and there's a lot involved plus I approach costumes different than everybody else they are pieces of couture clothing actually Sofia Vergara was the one that started the ball rolling with um, I did an outfit for her uh, when she danced at the Grammys with Pitbull <laughs> And I had been doing her red carpet gowns, and she called me, and that we had to do in three days. At first, she didn't want all the fringe, and and I knew there has to be something that moves. You know, that's what makes it sexy. So and so I ignored what she said, and then <laughs> and then it ended up working, and she absolutely loved it. 
every bit as impressive as the look of his gowns is the intricate detail beneath them. Even though the outside is beautiful, the secret is on the inside, and that's what I'm known for. And that's pretty much really why everybody comes to me. I can take two to three inches off of anybody's waist. I never planned on being a fashion designer. I was studying architecture, and I had gotten a phone call from one of my instructors and said, I want to recommend you for a job. Well, it was for fashion, and I'm like, that's not my thing at all. But she said it's for Nolan Miller and Aaron Spelling, who at that time, Nolan was an enormous Hollywood designer and Aaron Spelling, big producer, so I wanted to meet them. I ended up getting the job, and that's how I started the business. My first day on the set was uh, dressing Joan Collins, and that was <laughs> an education right there. And she came in after a scene, slammed the door, turned around and saw me, and started screaming, who are you, who are you, get out of my dressing room. She thought I was like some fanatical stalker. I panicked, I didn't know what to do, and Heather Locklear grabbed me. She opened the door, grabbed me, she said, you know, come with me, don't worry. And I was trying to explain, she said, Joan's not here today, it's only Alexis. My claws are the least of your worries. More than three decades later, these women still walk out of his studio looking and feeling flawless. Well, almost. A lot of the women hesitate when they know we have to take full body measurements. Will Joan Collins let you near her with the tape measure? She'll tell you what her measurements are, which are, and they're usually what her measurements were. So basically you give people the measurements they want, not necessarily what they have. Exactly. And as long as you're okay with minimal breathing, you're fine. <laughs> I can like squeeze, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, we could we could just we called her a mouse because we could just pull and pull and pull that waist in. It never stopped. I think at the smallest, her waist was 23 inches. That's tiny. Brittany, and Margaret, Angelina Jolie, Julia Roberts, Beyonce. It's hard not to get a little starstruck looking at the celebrity names on the mannequins that casually line the corridors. Each one of them made precisely to that star's exact measurements. Well, there's always an exception. So when I walked in, I saw yes. Sophia Loren, and this is not how I imagine Sophia Loren. No, and <laughs> Sophia Loren doesn't like seeing herself like this either. This is not Sophia's body. We've actually used her dress form and padded it for a private client we're working on. But Sophia came in and saw this and said, get that out of this room now and take all that padding off. Of course, a gal can only spend so long surrounded by this much silk, tulle and talent before she has to try something on. For research, of course. Look at this. I know, I can't breathe, but no one can tell. <laughs> no, you look fabulous. Thank you. I'll take it as a parting gift. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Just kidding. Not really. Oh, made mm. to measure. Wow. Catherine. Do you end up to uh, do you end up keeping them or not? That was Sofia Vergara's, right? Yeah, they were both Sofia Vergara's dress, one from the Grammys and one from the uh, Vanity Fair Oscar party. I kept many of the dresses. Unfortunately, I was taken to the Beverly Hills Police Department yeah, yeah. when they were promptly <laughs> returned. Uh, great but, um, stuff. It was it was really great, and, now, it, and there's another reason he's still in business, because he's very, uh, he knows what to say. He's like, you've got the exact same measurements as Sofia Vergara. I'm like, Sofia Vergara, who isn't breathing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got to try on those dresses, and it was very cool to see the mannequins there, because, for example, Sofia Vergara's mannequin had about 10 kind of bra pads to, to make out her full bust in there um, and then you saw Angelina Jolie's mannequin who was like this little bird you know much smaller than you imagine and then of course Sophia Loren who I think might be calling after she watches this package and say my name's still on the mannequin <laughs> <laughs> yeah fascinating insight he's obviously yeah. very good at what he does because the women he dresses all look amazing it was great thank you yeah. so much for giving us a little sneak peek behind the doors of what uh, one of Hollywood's top designers. Great it's stuff, fantastic. Catherine. Well Thanks, done Catherine. getting into Sofia Vergara oh. stuff. That's cool too. You look great. I Thank know. you. That's what I'm most proud of. That's what I'm most <laughs> proud of out of the report. <laughs> that gold yeah, yeah, yeah. Great for. stuff. And got the moves too. Thanks, Catherine. We'll talk to you soon.